from the archives of the greatest dramas in radio history, we proudly present Hollywood. The Radio Theater, starring Olivia de Havilland and Charles Boyer in Clooney Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A book that may have eluded your attention, albeit a bestseller in its field, is a hefty volume called Modern Plumbing Illustrated. If by any remote chance you should have occasion to refer to it, you'd notice that it opens with a chapter on the kitchen sink. In fact, the kitchen sink takes precedence over laundry tubs, shower bars, hot water tanks, and cellar piping. I mention this because our play tonight is motivated not by just romantic love, but also by a love for plumbing, starting with the kitchen sink. With 20th Century Fox's screen hit, Cleany Brown. And our stars are Charles Boyer in his original screen role, and Olivia de Havilland as Cleany. Two unpredictable people who meet at the aforesaid sink, and we end up, uh, well, you'll see how as our play progresses. It takes place back in 1938. We take you now to London and act one of Clooney Brown, starring Olivia de Havilland in the title role and Charles Boyer as Adam Belinsky. <laughs> Away, way back in 1938 in London, an amiable bachelor named Hilary Ames was expecting fifty guests for cocktail when a sudden bolt of disaster descended. His kitchen sink refused to drain. For an angry hour, Mr. Ames has been waiting for a plumber. Finally, come in, my good man, come in. Oh, thank you. You not me to pour your sunday, but it's sink or swim, you know. <laughs> kitchen's like right that. There you are. Quite from May, isn't it? Yeah, very interesting. Well, there it is. Well, just a look at it, old chap. Do something. Eh? Oh, you want your thing fixed. Right. Relieve the brain, relieve the strain. Uh, a bit of a poet, you know. Well, uh, what you need is a plumber. Right. Uh, you mean, you mean you are? Mm? Oh, unfortunately, no. No, I stopped by to call on an old friend of mine, Professor Lee. Uh, Professor Lee's been in Scotland for months. Oh. oh, well, now I am in a fix. What about me? I'm in a fix, too. Fifty guests, including the Honorable Betty Cream, and she doesn't go everywhere, you know. You are the most selfish man I've ever seen. What? You don't even know me. And already you're not interested in me. Why don't you ask me why I wanted to see Professor Lee? Why don't you say, my dear sir, is there anything I can do for you? Well, uh, is there? Oh, thank heaven I've rejudged you. Uh, my name is Adam Benito. Oh, um, A. Hillary A. Ah, uh-huh, delighted. Uh, still, I wish Professor Lee were here. Do you know what he would have said to me? What? Is there anything wrong to this he would have said? And I would have said with a sad little smile, no, no, nothing, but... He would not have believed me. Oh, no, no. He would have observed how tired I am. He would have insisted on my going inside and taking a nap. <laughs> uh, you had the most charming way of forcing a 20-pound nose on you. Made you feel you were doing him a favor. A remarkable fellow. Well, well, uh, if there's anything I can do, uh, that must be the plumber. Come in. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Well, did you have a party? I beg your pardon? You have a concern with a two part trip. Well, I'm Paris the Plumber, too. But uh, um, where's Paris the Plumber? Keeping out when he's got at the cemetery. I left some notes for him. Said I'd have a crack at the scene with work. You don't mean you're a plumber, too. Oh, no. But I've learned a lot from Uncle Arne. The research to conservatives is the art too. Conservatives? Oh, much too. Just a drop here and it's just there, you know. When what a good bang might turn out to some jiffy. So... I'll get to work. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, my dear Ames, where's your sense of adventure? Please, sir, do you let me try. Oh, but a lady, no, 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 no. when you're up against a deadline, you have to take chances. Well, young woman? No, what a congestion. Oh, I never thought it would be as good as this. I can't take enough, gentlemen. Uh, your instruments, miss. Thank you. Oh. I hope it won't take too long. It's 4.30, you know. Well, here you go. Anything happened? No, not yet. Well, I'm not discouraged. 
monkey wrench. A whack and a twist. A whack? And a twist. It gurgles. It did. Once again, then. It's coming. Eureka. Oh, it's Johnny, 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 Johnny. My dear child, my dear child. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, Bessie. Oh, it calls for a drink, doesn't it? So where are you two? I'll be right back with Scott Bessie. Oh, what a wonderful afternoon. My first drink and my first cocktail. Is it all you do it? Have another. Oh, thank you. Oh, she is just lovely. I can see the Do it, Have you ever had tea at the Ritz? Oh, I have. Last Saturday. I was wearing a suit, such an orange, to turn up the system, you know, and all the stunts I said to myself, clean brown, you've got a tiny nose in your stockings. Oh, don't you have tea at the Ritz? So, I said, that's how I think come over there. Was it a good tea? Oh, it wasn't a tea. But the nerve inside, the thing is, isn't it? And hold my chair for me. You'd never have thought I was out of place. What made you think you were? Oh, I didn't think I was. It's Uncle Lon. He's always telling me, clean me down, you don't know your place. They said, your place, clean me down. You ought to learn your place. And where does Uncle Lon send your place is? He didn't say. Because he doesn't know. I say, send a fire. I tell you where it is. Wherever you're happy, that's your place. And happiness is purely a matter of personal adjustment to one's environment. You're the sole judge. I am. For instance, some people like to feed nuts to the squirrels. But if it makes you happy to feed squirrels to the nuts, who am I to say nuts to the squirrels? Oh. Am I seeing that all over again? Not at all. I said some people like to feed nuts... My guest. Uh, um, uh, 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 come in. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Lama. It's Uncle Lon. Here I am, Uncle Lon, in the kit. Looney Brown. And with strong drink in your hand, what's been going on? Oh, here? I assure you, Uncle Lon. Name <laughs> Mr. Horace, giving strong drink oh. to a young girl. I've half a mind Oh, to... that's Uncle Lon. There you go again. You don't know your place. You never will know your place. But this is my place. Just anybody's place. If you want to feed not to the squirrels, who wants to say, do you? And that's settled it. You're going to take that job, you are. You're leaving tomorrow for the country. Yes, Uncle Lon. You'll be a domestic in a decent home. You're going into service. Now, come along, Clearly Brown. Yes, Uncle Lon. Goodbye, gentlemen. And thank you. Thank you for everything. You'll take the train in the morning, Clooney. You're a very lucky girl getting took on as father maid in a nice house in the country. What's the people's mind? Sir Henry and Lady Tom, they let you. But what if I do get enough to eat? What if they see these scraps and starve me down to the bone? Then can I come back from tomorrow? They'll see you late. What if they knock me about? They won't. But what if they do? Well then, send me a line. But be sure they do. Thank you, Lon. Hey. Do you know why girls leave home? Girls leave home because they're throwing out, that's why. Right. I wonder what his name was. Hey. Oh. Oh, his name. Oh. Not for the squirrels. Well, that's something to think about, all right. And believe it or not, Andrew, she fixed it. Bang, bang, and away it goes. A lady plump. This <laughs> is incredible. And what happened to the chap who was looking for Professor Lee? Oh, he's about some art, so I lost track of him when everybody brings him. Hello, Betty. Well, you've met our host, haven't you? Mr. Ray, the Honorable Betty Green. I hope you cheered him up, Mr. Ray. Well, you had an air of a Carmel fortune. It's not possible, you know. Oh, not at all. I think you can't understand cocktail parties. But no offense, Mr. Ray. When Europe is on the brink. Hitler and Vienna and Paul. Oh, I'm so tired of talk about Hitler. But you must realize we're on the verge of war. Oh, stop talking and do something about it. Well, I most definitely have. I've written a letter to the time. Yes, then there's nothing to worry about. Now then, I've something interesting to tell you. I've just discovered a man inside. With the screen, the place is full of men. This one's in bed. Come on, come on, come on. What is this? What is this? No wonder. The chef squirts. Good heavens. What's the matter? Hillary, that man. He's Belinsky. Adam Belinsky. You mean, uh, you mean I can know him? Is he a dancer? Oh, don't be an idiot. He's a great man. He's still Adam Belinsky. Adam Belinsky. Yes. He's a writer. A professor at college. 
one of Hitler's worst enemies. You mean the Nazi philosopher? Certainly. Look at him. Exactly like his sister. Behind that. No blood. Much no blood. His claws. What difference does that make? He's a great liberal. Oh, so that's not right, Norma. So do I. Well, I don't. And I'm as liberal as either of you. Oh, 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 excuse me. Oh, yes. Steve, we've waited a minute. Uh, hello. 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 Now, it's all right. You can trust us. I mean, you come in. Oh, how do you do? And I'm busy, too. You see? Oh, yes. Yes, you are honorable, and you don't go everywhere. Oh, we don't mean to pry, but you're in trouble, aren't you, Professor? Mm, well, uh, uh, yes, yes. As a matter of fact, unless a miracle happens, I'm a man without a home. You see, my landlady... Oh, that beast, that terrible beast, Hitler. Mm, I wonder if I've made myself clear. Oh, perfectly. And we must do something exactly. Uh, gentlemen, I'm afraid you are a little confused. Oh, I know we are. There's so much muddle thinking. I have an idea. Let's grab out of here. Is that in the right direction? Oh, of course, old oh boy, under the circumstances and all. But, uh, where will you go? Yes, where? Some place to paint. Any suggestions, Mr. Greenstreet? Well, uh, I should say the Ritz is a good, safe place. I mean, you could talk things over anyway. Splendid. Let's go. Sorry, Hillary. Wonderful party, but, well, you understand. <laughs> This is my lodging house. Thank you for a delightful evening. You see, I've never been to the Ritz before. Oh, it's been a privilege, Professor. Good night. Good night, Mr. Gilman. Good night. Oh, Professor. Yes? Excuse me, Betty. Professor, I, I beg your pardon for bringing this up again, but well, since you have honored us with your confidence... Yes? Well, I feel that the 20 pounds you were gracious enough to accept from me is most inadequate. Here, please take this. No, 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 no. My dear friend, you mustn't press me any further. I have this time. I understand, Professor. I'm sorry. However, should I need 30 additional pounds, you will give it to me and nobody else. That's a promise? My word of honor. Oh, thank you, sir. I I'll telephone you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Good night, Good night Professor. There it is. Yes? I'm sorry, darling, but I'll not be having lunch with you tomorrow. No. No. Tomorrow I'm driving down to the country. I've got to see father about Professor Belinsky. <laughs> To get to the point, Father, I'm inviting a guest here. Good. Mother? Of course, dear. Now, he's in great danger. Oh, he won't admit it. But he is. He must get out of London. Good heavens, what's he done? What hasn't he done? He's fighting for a new and better world. Whatever for? What for? Father, haven't you heard of the Nazis? Oh, yes, German chaps. Always wanted to see one. Send him down by all means. Father, he isn't a Nazi. He fights Nazis. Believe me, England won't be safe until we produce our own Belinsky. What the devil are Belinsky? What are Belinsky? Oh, I give up. Now, don't go all to pieces, dear. If England must produce Belinsky, why will it produce Belinsky? Belinsky is the man's name, Professor Adam Belinsky. Oh, well, we'll be glad to make his weekend as pleasant as possible. But this isn't a matter of a pleasant weekend, it's a matter of life and death. Well, you may have to stay here permanently. Permanently? A total stranger? Now, look here, Edward. But, Father, he sacrificed everything. He hasn't any money. To... Oh, Mother, I'm sure you'll understand. Now, I'm depending upon you to be very kind to him. Well, I've got to get back to London. You just got here. Betty Cream? Of course not. Betty Cream is entirely too superficial to be concerned about in times like these. Well, I'll see you as soon as I can. Goodbye. Hey, goodbye, Father. Oh, dear, I wish you were more interested in Betty. Nice girl. Fit for horse. Well, <laughs> why does he marry her and have done with it? Dear Uncle Long, I am right to see you on the train that is carrying you out of your life and to into my new career as parlor maid. There was a nice day of gentleman across to me and she saw Robin. She simply said she would have a car waiting for him at the station and she would drive me to Sir Henry Carmel's residence. She says any friend of hers is a friend of his. So just a minute. me. Oh, my God. 
Uh, Miss Brown, Colonel Graham just dropped her off. Well, aren't you going in to see her? But I don't know any Miss Brown. Oh, of course you do. Of course you do. You just don't remember. Andrew, he definitely said Mr. Belinsky. But do you suppose he could have meant Miss Brown? Mm, possibly. Oh, you'll remember once you get a look at her. <laughs> One of those relatives of yours, probably. Well, I'll have to refer to you anyway. Uh, Colonel seemed quite fond of her. Wants us to bring her over there tomorrow night. Helen, have you seen Miss Brown? Ah, oh, it, it really doesn't matter. Then, shall we say Lemon? Well, I used to sit you, but I'll try Lemon. Oh, well, then, look by all means. Sugar? Oh, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Are you quite sure? Yeah. Well, if you don't mind, try please. Try a crumpet. Oh, thank you. You know, I think this is going to be anything like it. And I've never seen such beautiful flowers. Yeah, that Alice. Mm -hmm. He works at it from morning till night at her empire. Maybe you'll let me help you. Of course, my dear. I'm so glad you like flowers. You're much nicer than I thought. I didn't think you'd be nice at all. <coughs> you didn't. I was even afraid to my star here. <laughs> Instead, here I am having tea with milk and four lumps and crumpets. Here I have another. Good heavens, child. Have them all. Oh, uh, you won't feel sorry. I'm going to do everything to please you. Even if it's the As you tell me. Lummy. I only switched one of your pipe flutes. I could fix it. By God. Miss Brown, I uh, I suppose you've known Colonel Graham a long time. I know. Uh, we just get on the train. But I, I feel as if I've known him ever so long. I'm going to have a puppy. You're going to have a what? A puppy. From the Colonel. You forgot. It is it's the first time he's ever given one of Roddy's a boy. I promise I won't let it interfere with my work. Your work? Uh, yes. Well, uh, I'll turn it down. You took it from the agency set me. Do you just set me? And you'll be taller night. Oh, <laughs> oh, I see. Mm -hmm. You thought I was going to be here, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Nancy, he enjoyed meeting you. Yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, this is Slim Brown, and you know them. No, no, no. No, don't get upset. But it isn't, Slim. We hope you'll be happy here, and stay with us a long time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Slim Brown. Well, spirits, how's it progressing? Uh, the new parliament. It's a little difficult to determine so soon, sir, but I've decided to let her assist at dinner, sir. Good, good. Now, uh, about what's his name? Uh, the chap Andrew sent us from London. The professor, he'll be downstairs immediately, sir. I say, Alice, what's his name again? Oh, dear, I keep forgetting, too. So many foreigners have foreign names, don't they? If I may make a suggestion, sir, think of the fur, Kalinsky. Of course, of course, of course. Professor Kalinsky. And now substitute B for Co. Belinsky for Kalinsky and the habit, sir. Oh, simple, isn't it? <laughs> uh, professor, uh, uh, what's the name of that fur again? Uh, professor Belinsky. Oh, Professor, how nice to see you. And you're very kind of you down there. How do you do, sir? How do you do? How do you do? Have a glass of sherry. Don't you like your room? Oh, most excellent room. Good. Comfortable bed, too. Oh, uh, there's a nightingale under your window. Oh, you shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. Not at all, not at all. Professor, you're most welcome here for as long as you care to stay. How very hospitable you are, but I don't feel I should accept until you know more about me. Oh, Andrew has told us all about you. And about this nasty business, you don't have to worry with Constable Birkins around. <laughs> well, uh, what really worries me right now is the lack of the dinner jacket. Dinner is served, milady. Sir Henry, I couldn't bear to face you in a lounge suit across the dinner table. Nonsense, nonsense. More lounge suit myself wants a dinner. In Naples, went slumming. Didn't want to talk to Naples. <laughs> How simple and charming you make effort. Good evening, Mr. Now, and mind that you hold the mutton cap properly. Oh, yes, sir. Stop leaping about. You will serve Sir Henry, sir. Very well. Ah, here we are. Mutton from our own sheep, Belinsky. Uh-uh. Huh? Uh-uh. What? Don't take that picture, Remy. This one. Much better. What? This one gives you a star. And it's bigger and brown. Well, I, I never. I never. Can you all have tea, sir? <laughs> no, thank you, Miss Brown. If you don't mind, I... It's you! It's you! Very much for the show! Oh! Oh! 
amazed. You take my muscles for me. I'll break the put off her. You'll be dismissed immediately. No, no, one moment, Sir Henry. Uh, you took the piece of mutton she suggested. Why? Well, uh, because the other piece had a blob of fat on it. Ah. And this one is brown and leaner and bigger. Mm. But hang it all, but in here, Dusty, who's done? What a pity. Does it occur to you, sir, that for generations the Lord of Carmel has probably eaten the wrong pieces of mutton? Oh, that's a very interesting way of looking at it. Besides, Henry, it's so difficult to get domestics to come to the country. Well, you needn't have dropped the whole platter and insulted my friend. What is it you said to you? Nuts to the squirrels. Doesn't make sense. No, no, it doesn't. It should be squirrels to the nuts. But... Well, not too deep for me, Belinsky. If I may say so, the lady, the sooner the young woman is just missed the death. Oh, Monsieur Stewart. I know, I know that as a guardian of English tradition, Miss Brown has offended your sensibilities. But permit me to quote someone to whom everything English was also dear. The quality of mercy is not strange. It drops as a gentle rain from heaven. Did you come there, Sir Henry? Allow me to raise my glass to Shakespeare. Here, Shakespeare. You'll give her another chance, Philip. Thank you, Lady Carmel. Clooney, may I come in, Clooney? Come in. Hello, Clooney. Oh, no, I'm so sorry I set you at dinner tonight. I'll be too late to the minister. Uh, forgive me for calling on you at this hour. I would have paid my respect sooner, but I had uh, some difficulty locating your room. Now, for heaven's sake, how did you get here? You remember my uncle, don't you? Oh, yes, that's right. He did speak of sending you into service. No, Mr. Belinsky. Oh, now, now, Clooney. But I don't want to be a man. <laughs> what about me, Clooney? I'm a city man. I love crowds and traffic and smoke in my lungs. What have I got? A big mouth nightingale right under my window. Oh, it's good to talk to someone who's out of place, too. Yes, Jenny, talk to me at any time. Open your heart to me. Okay. <laughs> That's right, Jenny. Put your head on my shoulder. There. Now, there. Oh, please forgive me. For what? For taking advantage of you. I can do the two more than me. It was me if you were more excited to leave me wrong. <laughs> sure I'm not. You were just happy to find a friend here, and so am I. Well, we must go on being friends. And as we are not our type, that should be easy. You, you and I two people in a beautiful island. Why do you think that to us here? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, that's right, Tony, but you know how it is on a desert island. You wait and wait, and that you don't wait anymore. Tony Brown, let's admit it, we're in danger. Oh, today we are not our type. But as time passes, well, we might not look so bad to each other. And if we remain here long enough, who knows? Oh, no. No, that must never happen, Mr. Belinsky. You must never become the victim of my circumstances. And if you could ever see your magic to me, don't hesitate. Just kick me. Good. Let us kick each other. Kick that pot. Let your kick on. Excellent. Ah, oh, I feel so much better. How lucky I was to meet you at Mr. Ryan's kitchen sink. Oh, I wish I were back there right now. I wish I could roll up my sleeves and unloosen the drawing. Bang, bang. Yes, Jenny. Well, I think I'll go to my room now and let the nightingale bang me to sleep. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Mr. Vanessa. In a moment, we'll return with Act Two of Tony Brown, starring Charles Boyer and Olivia de Havilland. At military and experimental airfields all over the world, espionage agents observe. They watch and record the flights in and out of the field, and they observe, as much as they can, the performances of new planes and weapons, and they listen. Listen to the voices of the people who work inside and talk outside about classified information. The outcome of wars in the course of world history is changed because people who should have known better talk.
Act Two of Cleaner Brown, starring Charles Boyer as Belinsky and Olivia de Havilland as Cleaner. <laughs> For three weeks, Cleanie Brown has pursued her career as a parlor maid on the country estate of Sir Henry Carmel, where Adam Belinsky is installed as a somewhat permanent guest. Now, on a pleasant afternoon, Adam and Cleanie negotiate a chance meeting in the village. Cleanie! Why, Mr. Belinsky, what are you doing in the village? Oh, just a walk, Cleanie, but look at you. Violets on your shoulders, roses on your teeth. And a whole garden of a hat on your head. What do you think? My afternoon off. From three to seven. Oh, that's perfect. Four hours. All to ourselves. Oh. I was awfully sweet of you, Mr. Belinsky, but... Well, something has happened. What? Well, what would you think of the gentleman invited you to tea? And to meet his mother, too. Well, I wouldn't go. But I've already accepted. It's the case, Mr. Belinsky. Oh, so exciting to meet a man surrounded by hundreds and hundreds of bottles and every one of the months or death. Mr. Wilson is the to get better appointed. He'll let me walk to make up a description. Oh, Junie, it looks as if your sheep are coming. Have a good time, my dear. Good morning, Mr. Belinsky. I hope you enjoy your walk. This is the parlor, Miss Brown. Oh, Mr. Wilson. What an elegant room. Yes. It's not Buckingham Palace, but it's Wilson's little car for. <laughs> you know, Mr. Wilson, the boy I look? Oh? Up there, my hat. Well, I don't object to it myself, Miss Brown, but Mother might think it a little frivolous. Oh. Well, I'll take it off then. Thank you. Mr. Wilson, what a time to... Come on, you shop for a prescription. I'll hear the tinkle bell on the shop door. Now then, Miss Brown, you might enjoy this. A map of our entire valley. Just look at it. Yes. Now, here on the map is where we are this very moment. And this is where I intend to remain the rest of my life. In this very house. What if the house burns down? It won't. You may have observed the lightning rod on the roof. Newton's imperial pinpoint, the very best. However, if a blaze should occur, it may reassure you to know that I am chief of the Friar Carmel Volunteer Fire Department. Oh, you're so Oh, yes. It would be all myself if I were to see you in action. Thank you, Miss Brown. Now I shall call my mother. Mother? Mother? <laughs> Mother's been resting. Ah, here she comes. Mother, Miss Brown. <laughs> How do you do, Mrs. Wilson? Your chair, Mother. And now, Miss Brown... I should play something on the harmonium. Oh, Mr. Wilson, is there anything you can do? You shall have your choice. Sweet Alice Benbo, or play gently Sweet Aston. Oh, they're both so beautiful. Then shall we say Sweet Alice, and maybe play gently for an encore? because I'd like to go further. Uh, Mother's taken a great liking to you. Yes, sir. Oh, I hope so. He didn't say anything. That is, apart from killing your throat. Uh, Mother, the waste words on Saturday. Oh, look. Hello, Mr. Belinsky. Hello, Jimmy Brown. Who can I walk? Oh, this is Miss Wilson. Mr. Belinsky. Oh, uh, how do you do? How do you do? Mr. Belinsky's staying at Charles Cornwall. 
Oh, Mr. Wilson, 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 Mr. Wil
Surprised to see you. You made that quite clear. Nice fellow, Andrew. You come to my room to tell me about Andrew. No, to talk to you about Toon Brown. Yeah. I suppose you have not even noticed, sir. Who do you think, in fact, your three foot cases, two hat boxes, and one overnight key? Hmm? Harry, no one, is it? Toon Brown. Yes. And Toon Brown would like to have evening off to attend a birthday celebration. Now, Mrs. Mary, uh, the housekeeper, and Mr. Stewart, the butler, are willing to excuse her. Then everything's settled, isn't it? Not quite. You see, Miss Brown has been assigned as your personal maid. Now the question arises, Miss Clay, can you, uh, can you get in and out of your clothes without breaking your neck? That I don't know. Try it, will you, my little lamb, my sweet? And if you should break your pretty little neck, just stay still. And if you promise not to come, Miss Brown may have a whole evening off. Thank you, Miss Davis. A pleasure, Mr. Valencia. Good morning, sir. What did you say, Mr. Valencia? I said evening is yours, Jimmy. Enjoy it. Oh, Mr. Valencia. You see, it's not only Mrs. Wilson's birthday, but Jimmy's been sort of happy. I could not You say have. Mr. Wilson has spoken to his mother about me. Oh, I'm sure she approved of you. Well, anyway, she didn't say no. She just said, oh, 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 oh. That's what he told me. Oh, uh, that's uh, very encouraging. And then Mr. Wilson also to me, and he's to look at her, and everybody, and they all... Not you? That's just it. He might ask me tonight. That's what he think. I see. So romantic, Johnny. Mr. Wilson, she asked. Hmm? Oh, oh, no, I, I, I can't tell you. Tell me what? But I... I had a dream last night. What about you? Call me, you did. Oh, you don't know how wonderful you looked in that day. And how you rode that black Arabian stallion. Hey! You just burned up the sand, and you slipped me up off the desert and kept me right in front of you on the saddle. My, you wish it a horse well. Tell me... Tell me... Does this do to my friend, Queen? That's the usual procedure, isn't it? You were taking me somewhere, but just in time, all remembered our pack. Our pack? Oh, yes. So I took myself. Oh, and took the stick right out of the bin. Mr. Belinsky, do we talk down to your pants? I... No. No, for you did the right thing. I have no tent. Not on the desert, nor anywhere. Well, turn along, Tony. Good luck. Thank you, Mr. Belinsky. <laughs> Miss Payne, what does one do with a woman like you? One gets out of my room, Professor. Especially at this hour of the night, I was about to go to sleep. A good beating. That's what I ought to give you. A good beating. Think it over, will you? But not in here. Or would you like me to scream? Why are you so vicious to my friend Andrew? Tonight after dinner, you did oh, nothing but... Oh, this time it's about Andrew. Well, are so it isn't a personal call. Oh, <laughs> Miss Payne, you hold no attraction for me, whatever. None. Really? Then why is your hair so carefully turned? And why do you smell like a perfume salesman? Hmm? Well? Okay. If it is me, isn't it? Well, that's very interesting. You know, I could have sworn I came in here for no other reason than to speak for a friend. Now, is it possible that when I reached for the brilliant evening, way down deep in my subconscious, I was reaching for something else? Maybe. I am beginning to doubt my motive. I wish to get out, and I don't mean subconsciously. Why are you so nasty to me? I agree. Wake up the whole house. Don't you ever think of any... What happened, anyway? It's all right, Philip. Apparently, it was nothing more than a dream. You may go. Uh, good night, my lady. Good night, Mrs. Mayler. Good night, Mayler. Where's Betty? She's in her room, Andrew. And she's perfectly all right. What happened, Professor? <laughs> It was all my fault, Andrew. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking for the bathroom and I mistook the door. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I've... I heard my door open and I thought it was a burglar's cry. Do you mean what an exciting evening? Well, good night, Professor. Uh, good night, Edith Mel. My profoundest regret. Good night, Andrew. Andrew. 
I want you to promise me to go straight to bed, please. I insist upon speaking with Professor Belinsky. You want the morning do just as well, Anthony? Very well, then, the morning. You see, I don't believe a word of what you've just said. Good dear, sir. May I come in, my dear? Mm. Of course, Lady Connor. You know, Bessie, you ought to get married. Yes, Lady Connor. Are you going to marry Andrew? Yes, Lady Connor. Then I think you should tell him so. Because he's getting quite a nice lady come out. And thank you. Good night, my dear. Oh, but you're not so old. No, thank you. Besides, I don't think he's home. Something about his birthday party, I believe. Oh, yes, he must have been quite a party. Go on it. Yes. I think you're satisfied, Miss Brown. But Mr. Wilson. All our guests have gone. And just as Mother was about to blow out her birthday candle. <laughs> I still don't understand what I did that was so wrong. For one thing, Miss Brown, the word P-L-U-N-D-I-N-G is not mentioned in Nick's company, let alone at Mother's birthday. But it's drunk. It's a flood in the bathroom. Miss Brown. And I thought I was being so helpful to see it. And I did fix it. I fixed it down. We can't discuss it any further tonight, Miss Brown. If at all. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> In a moment, we'll return to the third act of Keeley Brown, starring Olivia de Havilland and Charles Boyer. The first description or definition of leisure in the Webster Dictionary is freedom afforded by exemption from occupation or business. Well, there isn't a man serving the armed forces today who doesn't have a certain amount of leisure time. What is done with that time is up to the individual. But here is a suggestion that may come in handy. Why not take a course, or a group of courses, to the United States Armed Forces Institute? There are over 6,000 to choose from, elementary, high school, college, or technical. The choice is yours. How about discussing it with your education officer? Back to your producer, William Keeley. Act three of Keeley Brown, starring Charles Boyer as Belinsky and Olivia de Havilland in the title role. <laughs> It's been a bad night for both Cleeley Brown and Adam Balinski. Cleeley's propensity for plumbing has shattered her budding romance with Mr. Wilson the chemist. While Adam's brave attempt to smooth the path of love for Andrew Carmel and Betty Queen, likewise a sizzle sadly. With the solemn faced Adam, he faces Andrew's father at the breakfast table. I want a word with you. Sit down, have some breakfast. No, no, thank you. I, I don't feel like breakfast today. Have you seen Andrew? No, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to. You're in for a surprise. He'll bowl you over. <laughs> really? Belinsky, he's not a boy anymore. Two fisted man, overnight, scared the wind out of there. Oh. Know who did it? That fellow you're running away from. What fellow? Well, what's his name? Uh, you know, Hitler. Good heavens. What else happened last night? Was war declared? Oh, no, 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 no. But Andrew thinks it will be. That's why he barged into my room this morning and said, I'm joining the RAF. Never spoke to me like that in his life. Oh, the oh, RAF. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think I'll have some breakfast, after all. I say, Blin, see this talk about war. All oh, poppycock, isn't it? No, no, Sir Henry. I know Hitler. It's in the book, hasn't it? Well, what more does he want? If you really want to know, Sir Henry... Read the book. It's sort of an outdoor book, isn't it? Uh, what you call... Oh, yes, My Camp. <laughs> yes, yes, sort of an outdoor book. The old German idea of sport. Sir Henry, there will be a war. It's inevitable. Well, then I'm glad Andrew's joining up. We'll see this thing through, Malinsky. We'll show that light off. You're getting angry, Sir Henry. Good. Be angry, and everything will be all right. Oh, good morning, Professor. Oh, good morning, Lady Carmel. Good morning, Miss Payne. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Andrew. Good morning. Have you heard the good news about Andrew and Betty? You may congratulate us, if you like. They're going to be married. Imagine it, Belinsky. All this went on last night. We slept through it like a couple of days. <laughs> yes. Well, I wish you all happiness. You're both very lucky. 
And now I have an announcement. I'm leaving. Well, well, up here. Who's leaving? Well, really, I must get back to London. Well, you'll come like that, won't you? I wish I could, Sir Henry. Well, hang it all. Took me quite some time to learn to fable and fear now that I can. Teach me selfish of you, old man. Professor? Yes, Andrew? I still insist upon a word with you. Yes. Talk to him, Andrew. He can't leave us. Tell him what's what. I intend to. If you don't mind, Professor, shall I do it? Well, Andrew, about last night. I'm not a child. You were not looking for the bathroom door. You don't believe it, eh? I didn't believe it last night, and I don't believe it now. I don't believe it either. But if I should tell you, I wanted to meet Tim's room last night to talk about you. Would you believe that? Would you? No. But I did. Professor, I have great respect for you as a writer, as a man of principle. Thank you. But I'm going to knock you down. Got it? Huh? Well, let's get it over with. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. Uh, how much do I owe you? It doesn't matter. But it does matter. If anything should happen to you, I want to be sure of how much I owe you. Now, let's see. Uh, you lent me 20 pounds in London, uh, 4 pounds yesterday. Oh, forget it. What kind of a man do you think I am? Are we going to have this out or aren't we? Indeed we are. But I want you to know that I'm fighting and I'm handicapped. You hate a man who lent me 24 pounds may throw me a badly. Are you ready? Yes. Now, now, Andrew, I think you ought to know that uh, I was once lightweight champion of all Czechoslovakia. And I think you should know I was middleweight champion of all Oxford and Cambridge. Even mm. mm. Pretty warm, isn't it? Rather. Oh, it's no use. Can I trust you to wait here? Where are you going? Never mind where I'm going. But if you know what's good for you, be here when I come back. Betty. Andrew, Andrew, what are you doing? You took something out of the gift. I'm sorry, Betty, but it doesn't concern you. You've got to trust me, not me. But if I trust you now, I'll always have to trust you. And I'm sure I won't. It's a gun, isn't it? That's what you're hiding behind your back, a gun. Does this look like a gun? Oh, darling. Oh, darling, it's only money. And I suppose you'll think it's absurd of me to lend the professor 50 pounds. Absurd? Give him a hundred, two hundred. Oh, and I thought you were going to shoot him. Well, maybe I ought to. After all, walking into your room like Thank that... Thank heaven he did. If I had a screwed last night, we wouldn't be in bed today. Oh, you're so right, Jesse. I've said it before and I'll say it again. What England needs is more Belinsky. You sent for me, sir? Uh, yes, sir. I'm leaving. Oh, indeed, sir. You know, I will miss you, sir. And so will my one sister. You brought glamour into its crowded life. Thank you, sir. You three can increase its self-respect. You gave it hope. Thank you, sir. Uh, I'd like to give you this. Oh, thank you, sir. And if you don't mind, this other envelope is for Mrs. Mayer. Yes, sir. Uh, where, where is the Sue Brown? I have a little something for her. I'm afraid Brown is in this place, but she hasn't left her room this morning. Oh, nothing serious. Oh, no, uh, Mrs. Mayer tells me the birthday party last night was a bit too much for her. Oh. But I can call her. Mm. I'm sure it's all right. No, 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 it's uh, better like this. Uh, would, would you be kind enough to give her uh, this little package? And tell her, please, that I'm so happy her ship is coming. And that I wish her bon voyage with all my heart. Bon voyage, yes, sir. And uh, uh, should she ever feel unhappy, uh, tell her just to close her eyes and say, Quill to the nut. you remember that, won't you? If she's ever unhappy, nut to the squirrel. No, 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 no. no. Squirrel to the nut. Uh, squirrel to the nut. Very good. Thank right. you. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Professor Billy. Look at the look. Look at the look. Oh, look at the look. How is it Why should you be afraid of that? Because I wanted to thank you. Nasty, disgusting, Mr. Belushi. Oh, they are beautiful. I'm glad you like them. How did you think you'd buy them? You know what you want to do for the thing. Yes, I know, Jimmy. It's kind of awful to think of. Yes, it is awful. Uh, how is Mr. Wilson? Well, I know you ended up with Mr. Belushi. Was it sick? No, he was upset about his mother. Ah, what's the matter with her? Well, he was upset about me. Mr. Belushi, I distressed myself last night. Clooney. You know what plumbing does to me. I just can't get my hands off it. So I don't blame Mr. Wilson. No, I just don't blame his plumbers. Oh, you, you mean then it's uh, it's all over? No. You and Mr. Wilson? We did think so, we did think. But if you think, you can't tell me the same. Oh. He's got to ask his mother to give him another chance. Isn't that generous of him? Yes, I might still be Mrs. Hector Wilson. That is, if I can keep the wife, I'm quite strong enough. Well, this train is leaving, Clooney. 
Delivery, London. General Delivery? Are you expecting a letter? Always. That's what's so wonderful about General Delivery. Letters pour into it, millions of them, from all parts of the world. You know, I've never thought of that. Oh, you do make one thing think, Mr. Valencia. Mm, among all those letters, there might be one for us. Mind you, it might be very disappointing, but it also might be very encouraging. It might come from America. Mr. Valencia. This sound is very lucky. Yes, yeah, Looney. Looney, if I were rich, I would build for you the most beautiful mansion with the most exquisite and complicated plumbing. And right in the middle of the most elegant housewarming party, I would hand you a hammer and a monkey wrench, and I would say, ladies and gentlemen, Madame Looney Beninsky is about to put the pipe to their place. Madame Beninsky. Looney. Never again are you going to have to serve three meals a day. On the other hand, you may not have three meals a day. Sometimes, maybe only one. And sometimes, maybe only none. I don't care. As long as we eat it together, Mr. Belinsky. Just for that, we're going to have three meals a day. With all herb and champagne and snacks in between. Do you know what you've done to me, Tony? What? I was going to write a book. Morality versus expediency. Well, with luck. I might have made barely enough money for myself. But now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write a bestseller. A murder mystery. A murder mystery? What's it going to be about? A murder. A man gets murdered. Who's man? A rich man. Oh, yes. There's no use murdering a poor man. Oh, all right you are. You see how well we work together? Who killed him? Who did it? For 360 pages, I will not know myself. But when on page 361 it finally comes out, how oh, will I be surprised? And so will millions of others. Cluny, this book will make enough money for both of us. But Mr. Benetti, what is there to be three of us? Well, uh, then I'll write a sequel. But why limit ourselves? I'll write a serial. Oh, Mr. Benetti, how do you think I'm going to have much time for plumbing? Just saying, Professor Valencia's new book. At last! By Jove, they've been sold out for weeks. What's the name of it again? The Nightingale Murder by Adam Valencia. Where have you been, darling? I just took a doctor here. Ah, did you fix his plumbing? Uh-uh. You know what he said? No more steam and every time it's for you, he said. Uh-huh. <laughs> You mean... Uh-huh. Why? Colonel Belinsky. Excuse me, my darling. What are you doing? The Nightingale. Surprised again. By Adam Belinsky. We take our leave of Tony Brown and welcome our stars of the footlights for the curtain call. Olivia de Havilland and Charles Boyer, who's given us a most delightful hour. Thank you, Bill. I really enjoyed being King Brown. Does that mean you have a yen for plumbing, Olivia? <laughs> <laughs> no, Charles. The only bathroom picture that I understand is soap. Good night. Good, Good night. night, and thanks again for King Brown. <laughs> this is William Keeler, saying goodnight to you from Hollywood.